this is my review of Mob Psycho 100. Okay, so in this episode, we actually get to see the Espers facing off against um, Shimazaki, I want to say his name? Yeah, Shimazaki. So they're facing off against Shimazaki, who is one of the most powerful members of the Ultimate Five, if not the most powerful. At least from his pers at least according to him, he's the most powerful. Although there is an inconsistency in the manga, Sarazawa is the most powerful, Shimazaki is at least in close second. So... So yeah, he's there, he's possibly tied with, if not as par if not slightly less powerful than Sarazawa is. So it's entirely possible that he might be as powerful as he says he is, but we're not entirely sure because, as I said, there's a bit of an inconsistency there. So, so sh so Im so immediately after the Esper army is sent to to um a attack and apprehend the um the dummy group. That, you know, the group that was responsible for sending all those flying cars through the air and they were trying to keep the espers on the ground distracted. Yeah, they were they were effortlessly defeated by a combination of um, Teru, um, Takashi, and Go using all of their respective powers to create a giant flaming tornado that just distracted the esper long enough for, te for Teru to knock him out. Um, so, yeah, um, the, all of the Awakening Lab kids have gotten a lot stronger under... Um, Teru's tutelage, so they're a lot much stronger espers. And also, um, Terada tries to dismiss the fact that he was actually betraying them, and sure enough, he's immediately restrained by Teru, and the Shiratori brothers do a, do a bit of a um, probe on him using their using their ability to detect to read people's minds, which again, because of Teru's tutelage, has gotten a lot stronger. So now they can actually perform lie detector tests. They're basically human lie detectors at this point now. The two, bro the two brothers, uh, Daichi and Kaito, can now perform lie detector tests, which is a little bit amazing. But they're able to predict that, yes, they're able to read his mind and say that, yes, Tarana hasn't betrayed them, keyword being yet, so they, so yeah, they pointed out, they pointed out he hasn't betrayed them yet, keyword being yet, at which point Tara realizes that they may have to fight directly because they, they realize just how powerful some of the espers can actually be. So they go to, so they go to look up look for the rest of their group, and we're, and th that becomes a plot point later. Meanwhile, sh um, sh Sho and and Ritsu have wound up at the base of the Cultural Tower, but Shimazaki's in the way. So they have, so um, Ritsu decides to bait Shimazaki into attacking him while Sho climbs up the tower, pointing out beforehand that he realizes just what kind of thing Sho is going through, knowing full well that Sho that Sho is in a position that he worries he will one day be in with his own brother, pointing out that he fears that one day Mob might go berserk and unleash his psychic powers and there won't be a thing he can do to stop him. And he's helping Sho because he realizes that Sho is all in that position already. He has to fight his a loved one because they decided to go berserk with their psychic powers. But in any case, Ritsu distracts um, Sh Shimazaki while Sho infiltrates the Cultural Tower and sure enough, it works, and... But Rizzo gets banged up quite a bit, but he is able to distract Shimazaki at least for a little, little while, long enough for Sho to get into the tower and face his dad. Um, and, and he's eventually saved by Taro and his group, who try, who tried to overwhelm Shimazaki with sheer numbers, which doesn't wind up working out well for them, um, at least for a little bit. Um, me, but what... But while they're doing that, um, Sho does eventually arrive at the at the top of the tower and realize and goes to fight his father, only to discover that his father has been stockpiling energy for 20 years and is a little bit outmatched. So, yeah, Teru is almost immediately is almost immediately defeated, and points out, and also point, um, Sho is immediately defeated and points out points out that his father is quite strong. Because, and case in point, we actually see his father flinging him around the, the top of the culture tower with little effort, because because his father is a little bit nuts. So, yeah, and Sarazawa is there, who, who shows up at the last second because he was in the bathroom. He's he he's told everything about what happened from show, and he just decides that his boss is cool because of what of how his boss decides to handle things. So, 
Sarasawa kind of isn't the most reliable person here. I don't think, I don't think he real. I think the thing about, it's been a running gag with Sarazawa's character up to this point that he doesn't really realize he's in a terrorist organization. He thinks he, he thinks he's work, he thinks he's working in like a company of some sort and he's, and he's slowly climbing the ranks. And he doesn't realize he's in a, he's in a terrorist organization. He just thinks he's working in a, in some sort of cool, in some sort of cool, um, business he doesn't he doesn't know that he's actually a terrorist and doesn't realize it so he doesn't he doesn't really i think it do, he doesn't really understand it and i think that's going that's going to be a major plot point later um but while but while those two fights are happening mob is actually on his way to the cultural tower and the, his friends by proxy who are all fighting toward near the base of the cultural tower um and he eventually winds comes across minigeshi and his group and he fight and he, and he immediately scolds Minigeshi's underlings for, for still robbing his store and trying to take over the world, um, pointing out that they really don't know how anything is work, it works or how anything is manufactured, and therefore their plan to take over the world is kind of flawed, because they real, he, real, he points out that, the, that they only think they're special because they have psychic powers, but he realizes that they don't actually know any of the things that actually matter, such as being able to manufacture food to sustain themselves. So... So yeah, Mob, Mob gets, is pretty pissed because he knows full well that these are the kind of people he doesn't really like all that much. People who use their psychic powers to benefit themselves and only themselves, but are in fact idiots because they don't real, realize that his psychic power, that their psychic powers aren't going to help them make food. So he quickly, point, he quickly points that out to them and scolds them almost immediately for that. At which point, Minigeshi shows up and tries to overwhelm Mob with his plants, but that doesn't really work. Because Mob's on the defensive for most of this fight, but he he does do a pretty good job of holding off against Minigeshi. While also pointing out that Minigeshi doesn't really like plants. He points he points out, and sure enough, Minigeshi points out to himself that he doesn't really like plants, isn't if, and in fact they are just tools to him. Because even though they are living things, and but... Presumably, he only thinks that they're tools because plants, as far as we know, have never developed a way to express themselves. Um, we don't even we don't know if they're intelligent. We don't know if they can express themselves. We all we know is that they're plants. So, yeah, if plant if so, if if scientists somehow find a way to figure out that yes, plants can in fact express themselves, and they're not too happy about us eating them to stay healthy, then I don't think they're that I don't think we have much of a problem. So. So yeah, eventually, eventually Matsuo shows up and, and tries to help out Mob, and due to the nature of how his powers work, he is immediately defeated alongside all of his evil spirits. Um, but then things go a bit belly up for Minigishi and his group when one of it, when one of his dumbass underlings at drops um, Matsuo's um, poison jar, which can, which if you guys don't remember, is his way of weeding out the, the weaker evil spirits to create a strong one that he can tr control. But, but but sure enough, but sure enough, Matsuo can't control the spirit that's in the evil jar, and it's a immediately apparent why. Because the spirit in the jar happens to be Keiji Mogami, who then proceeds to drain all the evil, all the espers of their psychic energy, because they are in fact artificial espers, while also de completely just de decimating Minigishi's attack force by absorbing all of Minigishi's plant matter into into his being and creating an artificial body out of plants. At which point he tries to crush Minigishi, but Mob talks him down, pointing out that while he can't, that he knows full well that while people won't, they won't be able to watch every person every single moment of the day to see if they're actually going to become good people. He realizes he points out to Keiji that he that he needs to have more faith in people and that he and that he should has more faith in people than he than um, Keiji does. Um, and Keiji, hearing Mob's words, decides decides to finally depart for the afterlife and turns the turns all of Minigishi's plant matter into a giant tree in in his likeness. But before he le before he leaves for good, he promise he promise points out to Mob that he needs to be tougher with people or he'll never be able to change the world and keep it and keep everybody safe. And then with with that he with that knowledge, nugget of wisdom he leaves. At which point Mob decides to reunite with everybody else and goes to fight Shimazaki at the base of the cultural tower, which happens to be where he's headed. But, but uh, there's actually a twist in there that I'll get into in a minute. Um, so Shimaza meanwhile, Shimazaki is kind of fighting everybody to a standstill. He, uh, he, with all of the good guys fighting against him, 
he is able to keep up with them, but he is, but he is kind of, sort of, not doing all too, all too great. He, he is winning, but he's also, but he's also kind of overwhelmed because he has been hit a couple of times, despite the fact that he's able to predict other people's movements. And sure, and sure enough, while he's, while he's fighting, he also points out the reason the scars are called scars. Um, as he puts it, they've been crossed out by the organization. They are, Claws recognize that they are in fact useless and they have been, and they have been crossed out as it were using their scars. So, they, so that he, po so he points out that they'll actually be disposed of when the takeover actually happens. And, sure, sure enough, he's, he might be right because we've seen to Toichiro Suzuki up to this point. We know that Toichiro is that kind of person, so it makes, it kind of does make a bit of sense. But, but in any case, Ter but in any case, Teru, wa Teru, while they're all fighting him, re reasons that he can't, in fact, keep up with everything that's going on. That's when he's distracted that he's at his most vulnerable. And sh and sure enough, Shimazaki realizes that Teru, Teru is one of the smartest people in the room, or at least in the pile of rubble, and takes it and takes and tries to kill him, and by teleporting him around and beating the crap out of him. However, Teru eventually gets smart and eventually real eventually realizes how much Shimazaki actually relies on his powers and that he's able to act and from that he's actually able to deduce that Shimazaki where Shimazaki will teleport and when so he's able to actually keep up with Shimazaki now which is impressive because as I said Shimazaki is arguably one of the strongest of the ultimate five if not the strongest but he point but he points out that he's able to actually predict Shimazaki's movements now and even gloats a little bit pointing out that he's not by not even remotely close to being the strongest expert he's faced. And with, and while Shimazaki is busy having an argument with Taro, Ritsu actually picks up a rock, nails Shimazaki in the jaw, and from there all the experts are just able to gang up on him and beat the crap out of him because he's no longer able to focus on defending himself because he's been distracted and now he can't focus. However, just when things are going well for the experts, we actually find out that Shimazaki has one last technique up his sleeve and activates his secret technique, Mind's Eye, which enables him to read everybody's movement as well as their injuries, even a few that they don't know they had, and their, and their relative power levels compared to his, pointing out that his their techniques will no longer work on him because he can see all of the espers in the area and now that nobody can actually hit him. However, however, it doesn't actually pan out that way, as we find out um, Mob is actually on his way over, as I said, and is and is making his way towards Shimazaki. And while Shimazaki is all is all well and good prepared to actually throw down with Mob, he's thrown for a complete loop when it's revealed that Ray, that he actually met up with Reagan in the on his way over, who has no psychic powers and is therefore invisible to Shimazaki. And sure enough, when Sh Shimazaki, expecting a full-on attack from Mob, is instead punched in the face by Reagan and goes down like a coward. <laughs> So he quickly real so he quick and also due to a misunderstanding he believes that Reagan is in fact a very powerful esper who can hide his appearance from from other espers and is very afraid mainly mainly because Reagan has that power that he didn't know he had because he's Reagan he doesn't have any psychic powers um but also by Ma who's revealed to who ha who's revealed to have an overwhelming aura in Shimazaki's eyes and he's a little bit scared that there may in fact be more espers like this and so he gives up pointing out that he d that um world domination was always his thing was always never his thing and that it was in fact the boss's thing and as long as he was having fun that's all that really mattered to him a statement that pissed that immediately pisses mob off because Ma as mob points out if the if that's his only reason for actually doing what he did then he Shimazaki probably shouldn't be an esper anymore at which point Shimazaki decides to flee and ch and presumably changes his ways for the better mainly so that he be, mainly because he realizes that having fun isn't really a good excuse for trying to take over the world and he quickly realizes this and leaves so yeah with all with all that the espers are all now prepared to climb up the tower and join show and help him face off against his father but mob dismisses all of their help pointing out that he need that he's worried that they'll get hurt and realizes that they need to and that, that they need to stay behind because and help out because he knows full well that they're not in a position to fight anymore. They've they've been they've gotten the crap beaten out of him, so he knows full well that they should probably stay behind. 
At which point Dimple realizes that that, that was how Mob decided to take um, uh, K.G. Mogami's advice. So he decided to be t so Mob decided to be tough on people to protect them. Basically, that's what it, that's what the takeaway was. He took he took um, K.G.'s advice and decides to be to enact some tough love on them by pointing out that he needs to, that they all need to stay safe because they're injured. So he decides to go it alone. And sure enough, he he climbs up the tower with Dimple and Toe at, at um, Reagan's request, and goes to and goes to face off against Toichiro Suzuki. But not before running into Sarazawa, with, Zara, which is where the next episode picks up. So overall, this episode was just establishing that Toichiro Suzuki might be out of their league a little bit. So Toichiro Suzuki is revealed to have wanted to be able to accumulate power, and that makes him very, very dangerous. He's been accumulating 20 years worth of psychic powers into his body, and he's and he was easily able to overpower one of the more powerful espers we've seen in the series. So he's definitely dangerous. And Mob also grew a little bit too. He points out he's no longer the shy, meek kid he once was. Now, now if so, he finds out that people are using their psychic powers for their own personal gain and go completely against his morals as a person, he gets very pissed off very quickly. So, he's, yeah, he's grown a lot as a kid, but he's all, but as Temple points out, he might be a grown up already, at, at least mentally. So, yeah, uh, Mob is cra Mob is crazy mature now. He gr he grew up quite a bit in the past season. So, yeah, that, it's a very it is a very it is very interesting. It's like it's seeing this character that you've seen up to this point, but he's son he's matured slowly and without warning, and you had no idea that this was a thing. Now he's grown up a lot, and that's amazing. So. Yeah, now Mob has to go fight Toichiro Suzuki, and we're going to be seeing how that goes. I'm imagining not well, considering what we saw in the, this episode. But next episode, we're going to be seeing him facing off against the main antagonist of the series, pretty much, up to this point. So, we're going to be seeing how that plays out for him. Um, I don't imagine very well, but we'll see. But in any case, that was my review of Mob Psycho 100. What did you guys think? Let's get a discussion going in the comment section down below or over on my Discord server, link in the description. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, be sure to follow me on Facebook and on Twitter in the description below. And also, check out my Patreon in the description below as well. It's only a couple bucks a month. It really helps me out, and you guys get access to a bunch of cool perks that are my way saying thanks, so be sure to check those out in the description below as well. But in any case, thank you guys so much for watching, and until next time, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace!